Today, we're gonna to be ranking all 65 community days that have ever happened in Pokemon Go. And we're gonna be ranking them off of three criteria. Number one, how good is the shiny and the shiny family? Number two, how much does this community day impact the meta relevance of this Pokemon and in the meta? And then finally, number three, the bonuses and other features of the community day and how much did they really help save it? Without further ado, let's get right into it. So here we go with our tier list on tier list maker. I'll link this below if you wanna do this tier list for yourself and tag me on Twitter or Instagram at Pokedaxi with your results. I'd love to see what you guys think. Oh yeah, and by the the way our rankings are Bidoof tier, amazing, good, bad, and I'd rather transfer shiny Sableye. You gotta be pretty bad to be in that tier. But we're gonna get right into it with the first community ever, which was actually Pikachu. Pikachu, first community day, I think we're easily gonna be able to put this into the good category. People are like, oh my, uh, 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 what? The only reason I do this is because this was the first community day and it did start all of these amazing community days and all of these amazing opportunities to get these shinies. So it does deserve a little bit of credit. You still gotta show respect to the one who started it all. We'll keep these going in order with the second community day ever, which was Dratini. Now Dratini was a huge community day because it started dropping rare Pokemon in community day. And I'm gonna put this one in the amazing category. Overall, Dratini and the Dragon Line is an amazing shiny line, although I'm not the biggest fan of the Dragonite. The move didn't change up too much, but I think the shiny and just how strong Dragonite is and how accessible it got during this Q&A was amazing. And there was also three times catch Stardust, which was amazing. Easily in the amazing category. Okay, I don't think I have to do these in any order. Let's just go here with Bulbasaur as the next one. Frenzy Plant on Venusaur really made that Pokemon strong with a lot of meta relevance, but it's not the greatest shiny line. I'm gonna leave this one just in the good category. Just because of the shiny line, I feel like is a little bit weak, but Frenzy Plant is definitely strong. Okay, Charmander is up next. Blast Burn on Charizard. This Pokemon is, I would argue, just about as meta relevant as Venusaur in the Great League and the Ultra League and very, very strong in the Megas. I forgot about that, but I will say the shiny line for Charmander is much better. I'm going to definitely put that in the amazing tier. Squirtle, however, I'm just gonna put in the bad tier. Unfortunately, Blastoise doesn't even have the nicest shiny. Hydro Cannon on Blastoise helps it, but it's not the most meta relevant Pokemon. Definitely made it a bit better, you could say, but yeah, overall, I don't think it's the greatest community. Next up, Weedle. Now, Weedle got Drill Run, which is a pretty good move for Beedrill. Beedrill's not the nicest nice is shiny. It's not a terrible shiny, but it's nothing to write home about. Draw Run did make Beedrill a little bit better in the meta, but I'm going to put this in the bad tier. Yeah, really, it really wasn't the greatest. Next up, we have both Sandshrew community days. Obviously, they were together, so we'll move these together. I'm going to put these guys just in the good tier because I appreciate any community day that has two Pokemon. It just makes it more fun to go after two Pokemon instead of one. And also, Night Slash did help out Sand Slash a bit, and Shadow Claw was definitely super strong in Alolan Sand Slash, which is very meta. And to be honest, they both have decent shinies. So I'll throw these in here. Next up, Poliwag Community Day. I'm actually gonna put this one in the amazing category just because Poliwrath was decent in PvP, but with counter, it really, really became strong. Also on top of that, you could evolve into Politoed or Poliwhirl. So you had options for the evolutions and the shinies are amazing. Actually, shiny Politoed is one of my favorite shinies in the game. I guess Poliwrath's not the nicest shiny, but I still am a huge fan of the shinies, made it meta relevant. Uh, the more I think about it, actually, it did have quarter egg hatch distance as a bonus, which is not the greatest. So actually, I'm going to drop it into the good category. Maybe I'm a little bit ahead of myself. Next up, Abra. Um, I'd rather transfer Shiny Sableye easily. I just feel like the move they gave Alakazam really didn't do anything for the Pokemon. The Shiny is not that great for Alakazam. The bonus was three times Catch Stardust. I guess I can't put anything if it has three times Catch Stardust. We'll put it in bad. But yeah, overall, this was like during the time when community days were kind of L's. Same with Machop. I think Machop, I'm not a huge fan of the Shiny. I'm going to put it in the bad category. I feel like the move they chose from a champ payback was like the worst move they could have. They could have given it so many more interesting moves like Seismic Toss or something. And also the Shine line, I'm not a huge fan of. It's just kind of like a poopy green color. So we'll dump it there. It was three times catch XP, I believe. Okay, this is easily I'd ran through transfer Shine Sable. Like, Alolan Geodude was such a bad community day. The only thing holding this Pokemon is going to be its Shiny is decent. But like, I don't remember there ever being more hate for a community day than Alolan Geodude. It was just such a disappointment when it got announced. I'd rather transfer a Shiny Sableye, then play that community day again. Slowpoke, on the other hand, I think I'm just gonna put in the bad category. Obviously not the greatest community day. We did get the Galarian Slowpoke, which was a pretty cool introduction. But if, for example, it was already introduced in the game, this wouldn't have been anything special. And the meta relevant use of these Pokemon is pretty much limited to limited cups. Ghastly community day. I, I actually forgot this Pokemon had a community day. I'm gonna put this one in the bad category, just because Shadow Punch didn't really help out Gengar that much much, but it could have been nice for Gengar to get some sort of poison fast move or some sort of thing to make it better as a raid attacker. And overall, Gengar has a pretty bad shiny, not including the mega. Rhyhorn, on the other hand, we're going to put in the amazing category. 
great shiny in my opinion. Rock Wrecker made Rhyperior so, so strong. It is such a good move. And if I am correct, we did have, yes, three times catch Stardust. I would definitely put Rhyhorn in probably one of like the top 10 community days ever. Super, super great community day. Nothing to complain about. Next up, we have Electabuzz community day. This was actually featured alongside Magmar in the same month, but they were technically on different days. Unfortunately though, the moves that they get Electivire weren't too great. I'm just gonna put this in the bad category. It doesn't even have that great of a shiny. Same with Magmar. It's a little bit better of a shiny, but it's not noteworthy enough to go into the good category. Yeah, overall pretty forgetful community days. I kind of regret playing those. Magikarp on the other hand though, I'm going to actually put in the amazing category. Magikarp was a very tough Pokemon to evolve, 400 candies. Gyarados is a fan favorite. Gyarados got a great move in Aqua Tail, helping it with his PVP relevance. And it's a great shiny overall. And we also had three times catch Charter. So nothing to complain. Magikarp definitely easily in the amazing category. Next up, Eevee. This is a tough one. I think we just kind of have to go with the good category. Eevee's actually had three community days, two or three. It's had a lot. Across the board of all the Eevee Lucians, there are some that are useful like Umbreon and Sylveon, but there's a lot that are not useful, but they all do have decent shinies. I will say, I think Eevee community day is just kind of middle of the ground. It's nothing special. It's nothing terrible. It's a fun community day for everybody, but it's also one you don't have to play if you have enough Eevees because they are pretty common. And next up, we're going to have Porygon community day. Now, I will say Porygon does have a nice shiny. It got the move try attack during this community day, and it's a pretty rare Pokemon, but I'm still going to put it probably in the bad category. Yeah, personally, I feel like the move just didn't help it enough, although some Pokemon are just burdened by their stats. However, I am on the fence of almost putting this in the good category just because of how rare of a Pokemon it is when it got a community day. Any Pokemon that's rare that gets a community day kind of just gets like a, a free buff up because it's kind of hard to find the Pokemon, but I guess the meta relevance is going to hold it back. I think we'll just stick with that. Okay, we got some starters here. Chikorita. Now, Meganium is pretty good in the PvP meta. It's good in the Great League and the Ultra League. However, it doesn't have the greatest shiny and its community had three times catch XP. So just for that fact, we're going to have to put it in the bad category. Cyndaquil as well, we're going to have to put it in the bad category. Unfortunately, Typhlosion is just not that strong and same with Totodile. These were just like not the greatest community days. If I add another category in here above bad, I'd probably put them in there, but we're going to leave them there. Next up, Togetic. Yeah, we'll put it in the good community day. Now, although the meta relevancy, ugh, you know what, actually? Here's what I'm thinking. The shiny's not great. The move it got is not that great for it. The bonus was quarter egg hatch distance. But like I mentioned before, just because this Pokemon is rare and hard to get candies for, it's gonna get a buff here because it is pretty tough to get candies for this Pokemon and find it. So getting a community is great for it. And Togekiss is still a useful Pokemon. Mr. Fleece King. Okay, we got Marie. Now Dragon Pulse on Ampharos didn't do much for it, but it is a nice shiny and it had the bonus of quarter egg hatch distance. Now this was actually the fourth community that ever happened, but you know, I'm afraid we're just gonna have to put it in, put it in the bad category. I think the shiny is gonna keep it out of the I'd rather transfer shiny Sableye category. Nah, you know what? It's going down there. Marie Kunye. You're trash. Actually, you know, I guess Amphros is pretty good in PvP. Okay, we'll leave it in the bad category. But what I can put in the I'd rather transfer Shiny Sableye is Hopip. When this community got announced, first of all, everyone was mad because they released Shiny Hopip before the Johto Tour, but they said they were releasing all the new Shinies at the Johto Tour. But nonetheless, not the greatest Shiny, not the greatest move. Actually, it had three times catch stars, but I, I still, I'm not a fan of Hopip. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break my rules a little bit just because I don't really like Hopip. Okay, the Whoopers, one that just recently happened. Both Paldane and regular Whooper. Claude Desire came to the game, both pretty meta relevant Pokemon for PvP. I'm gonna put them in the good category. They're also decent shinies. They're not the greatest shinies, but they're better than some of the other ones we've had. And overall, I think it's just, they're just strong Pokemon. So we're gonna put them in there. Teddy Ursa, we had the release of Ursa Luna, which was a cool little feature. So we're gonna have to keep that in mind. It is a decent shiny. And the move it got was High Horsepower, which was a cool new move to the game. But I just don't think any of them have enough meta relevancy to really put them in the good category. If something is not that meta relevant, it just can't can't really make it into the good category. Swinub, on the other hand, was a great community day. Mammo Swine is one of the most used Pokemon I use nowadays as an ice type raid attacker and a ground type raid attacker. I'm gonna put this one, um, I'm actually, I'm gonna put it in the good category and just because of the shinies. The shiny Mammo Swine, I think is an ugly, ugly shiny. That might be a personal preference, but this is a personal tier list. It is, however, a very meta relevant Pokemon and did have the bonus of three times catch starters. Actually, you know what? No, I guess Dragonite is just as ugly as a shiny as Mammo Swine. So we're actually gonna put it in the amazing category. Great Pokemon 
great bonus, can't complain. Larvitar as well, I'm actually gonna put in the good category. People are gonna hate me for this, but I've always said that Tyranitar is meta relevant, but there's just better options. But as a rock type rate attacker, there's always been better choices than Tyranitar. And for a long time as a dark type, there was a lot of better options. It's not the most meta relevant Pokemon. It is not the greatest shiny either. And it had the bonus of three times catch XP, which is not as good as three times catch charters with most of these amazing ones have. So yeah, we're gonna leave it there. That brings us in to Trico community. Now, Sceptile, not the most meta relevant at all. It's a decent shiny, not the greatest. I think this is a pretty easy bad category. Torchic as well. You know, obviously you have Mega Blaziken, but other than that, Blaziken doesn't see much play. It's a decent shiny as well. We'll put it in the bad category. And here with the Mudkip, which is actually going to be our first Badoof category. You see Mudkip into Swampert. Swampert has so much meta relevant use. Hydro Cannon unlocked so much for Swampert. It's good in all three leagues. Good as a Mega, good as a Water Type Ray Attacker by itself, good as a Shadow. Also, this community had three times Cat Stars and also Swampert is a great shiny. You can't complain. This is easily one of the best communities we've ever had in the game. Mudkip, you can't miss it. We also have a Galarian Zigzagoon here, which evolved into Obstagoon, got the move Obstruct. Obstagoon, obviously an amazing shiny. This is probably one of the best shinies out of all the community Pokemon we've ever had. So we have to give it some points for that. And had three times cash stars. I think this is going to be a pretty good, amazing contender. Obviously, is pretty good in the Great League and the Ultra League as well. C Dot, on the other hand, I'm going to put it in the I'd rather transfer Shiny Sableye. I'm a fan of Shiftry. I think Shiftry is a cool Pokemon, but this community did not unlock a lot for Shiftry. It just gave it a clone grass type move. Also, Shiftry is not the greatest shiny Pokemon. And this was during a time where communities were not that hyped up at all. And it was three times catch XP. Overall, this is, I think this is a pretty easy. I'd rather transfer Shiny Sableye. Wasn't a great community at all. On the other hand, Ralts was a great community that I think we're going to put into the good category. Ralts going up into Gardevoir and Gallade. Great new shinies everyone could get during this community day. The move wasn't the greatest, which almost makes me want to drop it to the bad category. But just because Gardevoir is strong without the move, I think I'm going to leave it in this category. It's just, I, I I don't know, maybe I have a little bit of bias towards Ralts. Next up, Slackoth. I think we can almost put this in the Idrant. You know what? There's one reason I'm going to put this in the bad category and I'll explain. So Slack Off evolves into Slacking, but Slacking is not useful at all right now. It's a decent shiny, but it's not the greatest shiny. And the bonus was quarter egg hatch distance. So you'd be like, yeah, this is a terrible community. I put it in the I'd rather transfer shiny Sableye category. But just because of the fact that Slacking kind of has a cool gimmick in which it's like the highest non-legendary CP Pokemon in the game, I'm going to put it in the bad category because I think some people still enjoyed playing this community because you get a really high CP Slacking, which was kind of a cool flex. That's the only reason it's in the bad category. Other than that, though, it would be in the worst category. Rosalia, however, I will put in the I'd rather transfer Shiny Sableye. Rosa Raid got both Bullet Seed and Fire Weather Ball, which we have seen come up a little bit in PvP sometimes, but overall, this Pokemon is not that meta relevant, and it's kind of tough to run. Also, it's just not the greatest Shiny. I actually forgot Trap Inch had a community. Put him in the bad category because I don't mind the Flygon shiny. Yeah, we'll leave it in the bad category. Swablu was a great community. I'm actually going to put this in the good category because it was a 400 candy to evolve Pokemon, giving access to a lot of people to get this move. It also got Moonblast, which helped it out in PvP. And it's a very strong Pokemon, although not as much anymore. It got nerfed. Dust Skull is going to go in the I'd rather transfer Shiny Sableye. We don't really need to explain why that is there. Seal, I'm actually going to put, I'm going to put in the Bidoof category. If you did not remember, when Seal community came out and Walrin dropped, with the move Icicle Spear and Powder Snow. The way that Pokemon changed the meta overnight was crazy. This Pokemon became so strong, they had to nerf it next season because this thing was so busted. This thing has a great shiny and we had three times catch XP, which is not as good as Stardust. I still think this Pokemon just changed the meta so much and was such a great move on this Pokemon. It made it busted. It was a community you had to play. I'm going to leave it in that category. Hate me. And speaking of Pokemon in the top category, you know, we got to throw in bag on as well. Great shiny overall. Outrage made Salamence super, super strong. The best dragon type ray attacker in the game in shadow form and regular form. It's very strong. Just a great community overall. Can't really complain. And same, we're going to put in Beldum up there. I think Beldum is one of the best communities you ever had. Metagross without Meteor Mash would have been a hunk of garbage. But with Meteor Mash, it is one of the best Pokemon in the game. It's a great shiny as well, but you can't complain. That Pokemon's definitely going in the Bidoof tier. But switching back gears to some bad community days, we have Turtwig. I don't want to do this because Turtwig was my first ever starter and I love it, but we're going to put it in the I'd rather transfer shiny 
Shiny Sableye. Not a good Pokemon at all. Frenzy Plant did not help it. It's just, just, it wasn't a great community day for this Pokemon. It doesn't even have the nicest Shiny. Same with Chimchar. This thing just looks like it has a sunburn and it wasn't very strong. However, I will put the Piplup into the good category just because Empoleon is pretty good in the Ultra League and Hydro Cannon unlocked a lot for that Pokemon. Starly community day. Now, I have a little bit of bias to this community day. So I'm actually gonna put it in the good category just because I hit level 50 during Starly community day because it was like four times catch XP or something insane. They had a great bonus for this community day. It's not the nicest shiny. It did get the best move, but this is gonna be similar to the Pikachu respect I'm giving. If it didn't, I'd probably put it in the I'd rather transfer shiny Sableye category. Next up, we have the Shinx community day. Shinx is a great shiny, but unfortunately Luxray is just not that good of a Pokemon. So it's very tough for me to rank this. Okay, we also did have the bonus of quarter egg hash distance, which is not a great bonus. So I think just because of the bonus, we're gonna drop it in the bad category. Gibble, gibble, gibble. I'm gonna put this in the amazing category. I don't think the shiny is that nice, but Garchomp is just such a strong Pokemon and this is such a rare Pokemon. So I think that's just gonna give it more points. But again, I think the Garchomp shiny is what's holding it back here. And if it had a nicer shiny, it would easily be in the Bidoof category, but we're gonna have to leave it there. Snivy Community Day. Now at the time when Snivy Community Day came out, unfortunately Superior wasn't good, but now Superior is seeing so much play in the PVP meta. So we're gonna rank it off of that and we're gonna put it in the good category. The Pokemon is meta, it's very strong. It doesn't have the nicest shiny ever, but I will still put it there. On the other hand, for the other two starters, we're going to put in the I'd rather transfer shiny Sableye category. Actually, no, we'll put it in the bad category. Just because of the fact that, you know, they do have all right shinies. I guess I'll put the Tepig here, but I'll leave the Oshawott here because Samurott does see some play. Rogan Rolla. Okay, now there's huge fans of the uh, Gigalith shiny and Rogan Rolla shiny, which I will agree, it's nice. It got Meteor Beam, which is a decent move, but there was quarter egg hatch distance. I'm gonna put it in the bad category just because it's shiny is nice. So it's similar situation to Shinx. Timber Community Day. Damn, that's a tough one. I'm actually gonna put it in a good category though, just because it's a rare Pokemon, hard to get. So having Community is amazing. Litwick, on the other hand, I will put in the amazing category just because Chandelure is good in Pokemon Go PvP. It has a pretty good shiny in my opinion. So overall, I think it was great and it kind of fits in with some of these other Pokemon just being strong. Axew Community Day, however, I'm actually gonna put in the good category. Now you might be like, Axew, super rare Pokemon, super hard to get. Why does it not go in the amazing category? I think it's just because Haxorus is not the best Pokemon. Haxorus is decent in the Master Premier Cup and a couple Master League metas. Just don't think Axew has that much meta relevance. So we're gonna leave it there. Dino, on the other hand, we're gonna put it in the Bidoof category. Brutal Swing on Hydreigon made it the number one dark type ray attacker in the game. Doesn't have the most PVP meta relevant use, but I kind of find it similar to Bag on here where it's a rare Pokemon, it's good in raids, it's a great shiny too. So I think it deserves the Bidoof category and we're gonna leave it there. That brings us down to the end of it. The last seven, first of all, Chespin, we're gonna put in the bad category. Chestnut is just not that strong and same with Delphox, but I don't think they're worthy of the last category just because their shinies kind of hold them back. Froki, however, we will actually put in the Bidoof category. You see Greninja getting Water Shuriken and Hydro Cannon unlocked so much for this Pokemon. Before this was a Pokemon, no one could run, but everybody wanted to run. It made it great in the Great League, made it great in the Ultra League. It's good as a water type ray attacker. If Ash Greninja comes to the game, it's gonna be strong. And also it's one of the nicest shinies. I think we can all agree in the game. So I think this deserves this spot. Fennec in Community Day, we're gonna put in the good category. Not the greatest shiny, but Incinerate really made Talonflame great and unlocked a lot of things for other Incinerate Pokemon in the game. Noibat Community Day, I'm gonna put in the bad category. It's a nice shiny, but that's all about it has going for it. It's not a very strong Pokemon. Grubbin Community Day, you know, Chargabug is seeing some play in Pokemon Go right now. Vikavolt, it's they're all nice shinies. It's strong. I'll put it in the good category. Finally, we'll end it with Stuffle. I have not used a Stuffle since I have entered the game. It has an all right shiny, but really doesn't have much going for it. We'll leave it in the bottom tier. And with that being said, guys, that is officially my tier list. Taking one more look at it, anything I would change? I would maybe consider dropping down Pikachu and Starly, but that's about it. I think my tier list is pretty good. Anyway, the link is below if you guys wanna go ahead and make this tier list and tag me. I wanna see what you guys think and what you guys agree with and don't agree with. That's gonna be it though. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe we'll do it once more communities come to the game. Follow for tips, peace.